Toolkit Word is a flat earther who has done some debatable experiments. So I've got the I've got a little table here, all right, and there's a there's a can here. Um, so what happens when the Earth uh, tilts so that we see a sunset? Oh dear. That's just the tip of the iceberg, by the way. Recently, Phuket Word has decided to make a video entitled Why Would They Lie? Which I believe is his attempt at showing why he thinks that people that know that the Earth is a sphere do so on a matter of faith. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon and Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a quick thank you to the sponsors of today's video, Raycon. Raycon is disrupting the electronics industry by designing premium wireless audio for half the price without compromise. They're doing things differently than other brands out there. From the way they design their products to the way they price them, Raycon prioritizes their customer experience from start to finish. The company was co-founded by Ray J and celebrities like Snoop Dogg and Mike Tyson are obsessed with Raycons. Raycon earbuds give you six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass and a more compact design for a comfortable noise isolating fit. If you're trying to take a break from screens but don't want to feel totally unplugged, then Raycon wireless earbuds are the best way to bring your favourite content out and about with you wherever you go. I've recently been listening to TalkSport in my downtime, catching up on all the football news. Raycon offers their wireless earbuds in a range of fun colours and patterns with a variety of fit options and no dangling wires or stems. Plus, Raycon has a free 45 day return policy. Click in the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com slash simandan to get 15% off your first purchase of Raycons. Right, back to today's video where Phuket Word wants to answer the question, why would us globe believers lie about the place that we live? Here we go. Hello, Flat Earth researchers, debaters and debunkers. Sorry, but before Phuket starts, what a view. I mean, seriously. When you first hear about Flat Earth, the most challenging thing to do is to even begin questioning the perception or belief that we live on the outside of a rotating globe. Because, of course, it would appear that it's already been proven as a scientific fact that we are another planet in the solar system and that we've already gained the uh, scientific knowledge and expertise to send people off to the moon and back again safely and, of course, to send probes off to the dusty red planet of Mars, millions of miles away. That's because it is scientific fact without any doubt whatsoever. So so this makes it even more obscure of a so-called conspiracy theory to even begin contemplating because it would the the idea or the understanding that we live on a globe is so embedded in our collective mindset as scientific consensus indeed why wouldn't you teach the facts about the place that you live to the younger generations. Some of that science is so basic that even the kids understand it. But when we do eventually get round to scrutinising what we are presented with and what we are not presented with in terms of the evidence to back up the claims of science allowing us to get to other worlds is when we start to see holes in the narrative and if we are of a slightly conspiratorial mindset, or at least with an open mind, we can begin to understand not only why would they lie, but just how easy it is to lie and get away with it. I genuinely think that these holes in their narrative that you're referring to are more like holes in your understanding. And I think what would benefit everyone is that if you drop the conspiratorial mindset and actually attempt to understand the science involved. When we get the question, why would they lie? It often comes with the underlying assumption that because there are hundreds of thousands of individuals employed in the aerospace industry across the earth in various different countries, 
they would all have to be in on it and it would be just impossible for all these people to tell a lie or not realize that they were part of a bigger lie. Exactly. Sooner or later, you would expect someone to blow the whistle. I mean, look at the Monica Lewinsky and Bill Clinton thing. Only two people knew about that. And now look. But uh, when you look at the way any organization is structured, then most duties and jobs are very compartmentalized and vast majority of uh, individuals working in an organization only play a small part in uh, the end result and are not really not privy to what's going on in the upper echelons. So... Okay, so you think that only a very few select people in these organizations know the truth and companies that employ people like NASA and JAXA and ESA, all of the people that work for them are clueless. Right. But you still would expect to see a deathbed confession or something somewhere, wouldn't you? It would be actually very easy to have hundreds and thousands of people working in very compartmentalized uh, positions and only doing what they specialize in and so they wouldn't have to be lying they are in fact doing good science uh, there's no denying that a lot of the technology that we take for granted nowadays even the software and the hardware that we use is a result perhaps of uh, the efforts in the apollo missions where many brilliant minds collaborated to downsize hardware and software and come up with new ways of doing things in order to uh, communicate and navigate and put all this equipment into uh, uh, something the size of a, a capsule that was put on the top of a rocket. Now, interestingly, this is actually the first time I'm, I've ever heard a flat earther say that NASA is actually useful. And he's even saying that the Apollo program was a real thing. Interesting. So, yes, there is real science going on on the ground here on Earth. And many brilliant minds have contributed to uh, extraordinary developments in the scientific field and uh, technology as well. And of course, ultimately, what often happens with technology developed for or on behalf of NASA is it does end up coming back into use in, in a commercial way. So NASA itself is, is an agent uh, for commercial entities and a lot of money and commerce and jobs are created just because there is a mission to do something like go to the moon or go to Mars. Whether they actually go there or not doesn't matter. The invoices are created, uh, the money is generated, people have jobs. Again, a strange admission here from this flat earther. He's not saying that the 52 million a day or whatever it is, is wasted. I think we're starting to see some compromise here from Phuket Word. Is he for turning? and they are mostly very compartmentalized specific jobs in which they really wouldn't know what other people in other departments or compartmentalized jobs are doing and would leave those experts to do their thing. So at the top of the pyramid you have a very few people who would still not necessarily be aware of what's actually happening if for example, we aren't sending probes off to uh, Mars or, or the Moon. The information or the data that they receive back uh, could easily be sent from somewhere else here on Earth. But if they're faking it, then why send it from anywhere? Just make it up, surely? So I've just taken as an example a couple of screenshots here from uh, a recent documentary talking about Mars and, and uh, talking with people that were involved in the project. And here you can see the captions for uh, the person talking at the time, Diana Trujillo, uh, and she is saying, uh, when I look at the pictures of Mars, I see the Mojave Desert, right? Oh, here we go. Like a dog with a chew toy. He's not going to let this one go. And we can see here she is the lead engineer of Surface Readiness Test Program at NASA JPL. 
And uh, then she goes on to say, but I can't tell the difference if this image is from the Mojave Desert or if this is from Mars. And what's wrong with that? I think a lot of people will be caught out with these sorts of images. So straight away, we have uh, a great example of someone who is doing something very important in the Mars mission. And the only thing she can really refer to is somewhere on Earth. And it's just ironic that uh, Mars is said to be very similar to some of the dry places on Earth. And why is that surprising? The whole of Mars is effectively a desert made from the same material that was in the same protoplanetary disk that created both us and Mars. So here we have a photograph of one of Earth's very dry deserts and we can see here a surface that is um, uh, very similar to the kind of rocks and dust and sand we are seeing uh, on the pictures from Mars at the moment being delivered from the rover. So? Uh, we do see a road here, uh, so we know that this is actually on the Earth, but with uh, uh, a couple of filters and things, we can just uh, as easily change this to make it look as if it's a scene on uh, a red dusty planet with a kind of hazy atmosphere filled with dust storms and that's not reaching not, not so much sunlight because it's further away from the sun uh, we can very easily create these uh, photographs and just because we can make these photographs it does not mean that is what nasa is doing i can make a photo look completely dark no light at all but it doesn't mean that that photo was taken in darkness in fact what you saw at the very beginning of this was uh, not actually a shot of, from NASA of anything landing on another planet. It was just of uh, terrain very similar to this that was uh, taken from several thousand feet high in an aircraft. And as you see the, the next clip from that, you'll see uh, that there are vast expanses of desert on this Earth where there are no inhabitants and there is no there are no real signs of life that could easily be used for replicating the kind of conditions one would expect to see on mars okay so what it doesn't mean that we haven't sent a rover to mars does it and all the instruments that are on the rovers could all be sending back data and they could be taking soil samples they may or may not be true, but how would anyone verify what they're receiving? And then we have the questions as to whether the technology that has been developed would actually work in the environment that we are told it is in. For example, the Mars rover is said to have been parachuted down to the surface and then it was uh, let down on cables beneath a cradle with thrusters on it and left there to do its thing and it apparently survived all this to send photographs and footage back to us. Indeed it did, but NASA were worried about this. It could have gone wrong. However, has any real testing ever been done on the Earth to simulate the kind of environment that uh, it will be experiencing there? For example, uh, the atmosphere is said to be so thin on Mars that it is the same as being 100,000 feet above the surface of the Earth where the air is very thin and you even need oxygen to breathe. Has anyone ever used a parachute at that height? I can't find any evidence of that and I also cannot find any evidence of people testing this rover and its parachutes on or above the Earth in real conditions to see if those chutes would actually open. I literally typed in Perseverance Landing Testing NASA and this came up straight away. Classic flat earth research there. It all comes down to being based on faith. Everyone has to have faith that these people in their compartmentalised positions 
did the right equations and made the right guesses and it all worked out in the end because no one ever saw it ever really happen in full on the earth. It all comes down to having faith and that's where you have to discern the difference between real knowledge and belief. Having faith that people have done their job properly isn't the same as blind faith. Who was Phuket Word trying to convince in this video? Us globe knowers or himself? I'll let you decide. Phuket Word? I genuinely think that you're starting to turn me old chum. Right, there we go. Another Flat Earth Friday all done and dusted. Thank you very much. Dusted. Mars. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, then please, please do like and subscribe. Just enough time to again thank Raycon for sponsoring today. Remember, visit buyraycon.com slash simandan to get 15% off your first Raycon purchase. I have been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great weekend and I'll see you all on Tuesday for some more tinfoil fun. See you then. <laughs>